What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, strengthsandsneakers.com. So this video, what I wanna do is answer a question that I get a lot, and that is, what is the difference between immediate release and extended release formulations in psychiatry? So when we're prescribing medications and we call it an immediate release drug versus a extended release medication, what does that mean and how does that play out clinically and why is it important for people to know about? So immediate release, like the name implies, is going to result in an immediate release of the medication. So a quick onset of peak blood levels. That's the idea behind it. You take it and you get a quick increase in blood levels. This type of formulation generally is less expensive. So if you have a patient who's having trouble with the cost of medication, this might be one reason why you might use it. And of course, it could be advantageous in situations where you do want a quick uh, rise in blood levels and you do want to get the medication effects much quicker uh, and for maybe potentially for a shorter period of time as well. So this could be an example of a ADHD medication like methylphenidate. You might give the immediate release formulation if you have a, a child patient that you're working with that has difficulty with insomnia or having insomnia from the medication. So you want it to work pretty rapidly over a short duration of time and you want the effects to wear off a little bit quicker because you don't want that person to have trouble falling asleep at night. The main problem with this medication and the immediate releases, immediate release medications is the number of times the patient's going to have to take the medication per day. Most of these formulations are going to require twice daily dosing or in sometimes three times a day. Uh, and when you're going two or three times a day, people tend to forget to take the medications. If you've ever had the experience where someone's prescribed you medication, and you had to take it more than once a day, I'm sure you forgot at least once or twice over the course of that period of time that you were prescribed the medication to take the medication two times or three times a day. It's very difficult. So life is hard enough. We don't want to add more stress and difficulty to our patients' lives. The other thing to think about here is that the blood levels of immediate release are inconsistent. So we want blood levels that are going to be relatively stable. We don't want a whole bunch of peaks, really high peaks, and a whole lot of troughs where we get the low points. We want to keep a sustained, even-keeled blood level of the medications. In most cases, these are the ones that, again, you're prescribing you know, long-term or longer-term. So that's another issue that happens with immediate release formulations. The last thing I want to talk about with immediate release formulations is the addictive potential. And this is, again, specifically, I'll go back to the example of ADHD and prescribing things like methylphenidate or uh, amphetamines, either case. So what happens when you give an immediate release formulation is that you get a rapid rise in blood levels of the medication, right? And when you're talking about medications like amphetamines or methylphenidate or something like that, these stimulant medications, you, that rapid rise in the medication level can result in euphoria and of course if the person is getting euphoric from this they're going to want to take it more often and it's going to lead to addictive potential. So that's where the addictive potential component of immediate release formulations comes into play. Now let's focus on extended release. What's the deal with these extended release? Well extended release does not change the active ingredient or the active medication. Rather, it provides a different delivery mechanism that slows the release of medication over an extended period of time. So what this does is a different delivery mechanism. It slows down the release of medication as the drug is being metabolized so that you get a more sustained release of the drug over time. So that's sort of the idea behind it. So immediate release, extended release, it's the same, basically the same medication, just differences in that mechanism of release. This has the opposite effect of immediate release in terms of the blood, the blood levels. You're not going to get a really, really high peak as soon as you take the medication. You're gonna, again, get that more sustained. Of course, you're gonna get a rise, but then it's gonna kind of level out and steady. And that is what we're looking for in most cases. That's, and again, medications we're prescribing long-term. Short-term, it might be okay, right? You might need to, to use something that's going to get an immediate peak in blood levels because you're trying to treat acute symptoms such as anxiety, let's say. The next thing to focus on on extended release is it requires just once daily dosing. So this simplifies people's lives. People like simple lives, I like a simple life. So if you can simplify your patient's life a little bit, make it easier for them to remember to take the medication, you're doing them a huge favor and you're making their lives much, much easier 
And you're also increasing uh, compliance or adherence with medication treatment. They're more likely, the patients are going to be more likely to remember to take a drug they only have to take once a day versus one that they have to take multiple times a day. Some of the downsides to extended release are they tend to cost more money. And some people have made this argument that on initiating these medications, you can actually have more adverse reactions. So let's say someone's never taken this medication before, we decide to give an extended release formulation, they're going to have side effects over a longer duration of, of time. I don't really see that play out clinically. I try to give extended release formulations when I can. So my clinical experience tells me that I prefer in most cases to give extended release formulations. And again, if I'm planning to prescribe that medication for a long period of time, say this is a maintenance medication, then I prefer extended release if possible for the reasons we've already discussed in this video. Now, there are cases, like I said, where immediate release may be a better option. And, and you know, one of the main ones that I don't think gets talked about enough is the cost of these things to our patients. You know, uh, medications are great but, and do have their, their place in psychiatry, but they also can cost more money depending on the formulation. And you see this a lot with the ADHD medications where they continue to change the, um, the, the release, basically. They, they continue to change that mechanism uh, by which the medication's released, and then they end up with a whole bunch of medications of, that are basically the same, just with slightly different mechanisms for the uh, releasing of the drug into the blood. But anyway, that concludes the video. If you guys like the channel, please subscribe. Uh, it helps us to keep making content, and we'll be back again with more clinically relevant topics and try to answer any questions you have. Comments, please drop them below. I'll do my best to answer everybody's questions.